Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I agree wholeheartedly with the comments of the gentleman from Fairfax, the one that spoke second, <laughs> the second gentleman from Fairfax. And um, th this, this, this entire issue right now is a legal mess. And I just want to give you all a little bit of legal background and then uh, hit some other points. First of all, Virginia adopted the electric chair in 1908. We also added lethal injection in 1994. And since 1994, a condemned person has a choice. When it comes time for them to be executed, they're asked to select, do you want to uh, be executed using the electric chair or do you want to be executed using lethal injection? Today, today, the exact protocol that's used, the drugs that are used, is public. We currently use, we were using, pentobarbital or sodium thiopental sodium, which is anesthetic that renders you unconscious. Then we were using pancurium bromide or ro rocuronium bromide, which is a muscle relaxer which stops breathing. And then we uh, inject a third substance, which is called potassium chloride, which stops your heart. The problem that arose was sodium thiopental, and the European manufacturers began withholding shipments of those to the United States because it was being used in executions, and the European Union prohibited this. In October of 2013, the state of Florida switched from that drug to a drug called midazolam, and then Ohio switched to that, and some states have been using midazolam since 2013 to get around the problem. Now, if you all remember, last session, the gentleman from Manassas and uh, the senator from uh, Galax, Senator Carrico, introduced legislation making or t purporting to make the electric chair the default method of execution if we d could not obtain the drugs. During that process, the Department of Corrections came to the committee. I wasn't, I'm not on the committees, but they came to committee and they made representations about what drugs were and were not available. If you all remember, the Richmond Times Dispatch came out with an article in the middle of our debate which pointed out that the information that we had been given about the availability of drugs for executions was inaccurate and that the department had been stockpiling alternate drugs, midazolam, in order to further executions. And the only reason we know this is because of the Freedom of Information Act. That's the only reason we know that the information we were given during the legislative process was inaccurate. Legislation that this seeks to take away from us. Now, as a result of that, as a result of that, I personally wasn't happy. I sent a FOIA request to the Department of Corrections, and I asked them to provide much fuller information about what they had, what they were doing, what they were planning on doing, what protocols they planned to use. That FOIA request was sent back to me with a letter saying, we're not going to tell you because this will endanger uh, government safety or something. So we filed a mandamus action at Fairfax County Circuit Court. A Fairfax County Circuit Court ordered the Department of Corrections to turn over all their records about this stuff. The Department of Corrections appealed to the Supreme Court of Virginia, and two weeks ago, two weeks ago, the Supreme Court of Virginia accepted an appeal as to exactly what the scope is of FOIA when it relates to lethal injection. That case is pending before the Supreme Court of Virginia. It will be heard by June, and we will find out what we're entitled to and what we're not entitled to pursuant to FOIA. That is, unless this bill passes, which seeks to basically completely undo the lawsuit that's pending. In the meantime, other litigation has gone on nationally, and the United States Supreme Court accepted an appeal, I think about a month ago, indicating that they intend to review the constitutionality of lethal injection. Other states that are using the same protocol as we do have put all their executions on hold because they want to hear what the Supreme Court says before they go back and completely redesign their protocols or before they do anything. And that's what we need to do. We don't need to be writing, rewriting laws while there are two pending cases that are going to basically tell us what laws we ought to adopt. This legislation is premature. So, Mr. Speaker, one, this interferes with two pending lawsuits. Two, there are no executions scheduled this year. There are none. I checked with the administration this morning. There's one gentleman who hasn't even filed his federal habeas petition yet. There are no executions that are going to take place in Virginia this year. There is no need to hurry up. Third, one other thing I want to point out, Mr. Speaker, is that in order for these compounding pharmacies to get these drugs, they have to certify to the EU Exporting Authority that their drugs are not going to be used in an execution. 
One law professor is opined from, from uh, Richmond University Law School that it will be impossible for a drug manufacturer to certify their drugs are not going to be used in an execution if the state won't say which drugs are being used. So that drug might not even be able to be imported into the United States of America, midazolam, at all for any purpose, medical or otherwise, because we want to adopt a secrecy provision. This hasn't been thought through, Mr. Speaker. It hasn't been thought through fully, and it hasn't been fully vetted. Fourth, Mr. Speaker, there are seven editorials out there from different newspapers telling us not to pass this bill because of the secrecy provision. Seven different editorials. The Richmond Times-Dispatch, The Washington Post, uh, The Virginian Pilot, uh, The Lawyers, Virginia Lawyers Weekly, the American Bar Association have adopted a resolution opposing this. Mr. Speaker, what we need to do is let the U.S. Supreme Court speak, let the Supreme Court of Virginia speak. This is not about the secrecy of the executioner. The person that puts the syringe in the person's body, their identity will remain secret. What the public has a right to know, what we have a right to know, is what the contents of the syringe are going to be. And that's what the law is. It's what it's been for 21 years. There's not a problem with it. And the enactment clause is a prudent way to proceed to make sure that we get this right.